a large, frosty, isolated land where barely anyone lives. This is in short, Magadan Oblast. But does this mean there's nothing to discover here? Well, actually, there's plenty to talk about. So stick around and let me tell you all about Magadan Oblast. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. Far away from Moscow lies a huge and virtually unknown region of the world, the Oblast of Magadan. While it's one of the largest while it's one of the largest Russian federal subjects, larger than Sweden actually, at the same time it's one of the least populated regions too. Only about 150,000 people live here. To understand just how sparsely populated this place is, imagine that, on average, you'll find only one person, not per square kilometer, but every three square kilometers. In reality, it's even worse, since nearly three quarters of the people live in the capital, which means that you could literally walk for days and not see another human being. If you wonder why, well, most of the oblast is a mountainous desert or tundra, and the climate is, shall we say, harsh? Alright, so it's not the most welcoming place on earth, and yet, we do have plenty to talk about. So let's go ahead and start with the history. For thousands of years, Siberian Aboriginals like the Yukagirs and Evans lived in and around Magadan. Their main occupation was fishing, hunting and herding. But this way of life got interrupted in the 17th century when the first Russian Cossacks reached the area. The disruption, however, wasn't very big. Joining the Russian Empire had little to no impact on the locals' way of life. Well, there were some new taxes plus Christianity, but that's about it. For centuries, Magadan remained mostly an undeveloped and ignored land. Until, that is, the 20th century, when gold was discovered. This brought new settlers to the region and Magadan began to change. By this time, the Soviets were already in power, so they built the first mines, factories, ports and roads. And of course, of course, they used prisoners to build thousands of kilometers of roads, transmission lines and everything else. More on that in a bit. In time, the region developed its infrastructure and living standards actually rose to being among the highest in the USSR. But after 1991, the economy collapsed and nowadays Magadan's economy is suffering quite badly. With a population of nearly 100,000, the oblast capital, Magadan City, is by far the largest settlement in the region. Initially, lone gold prospectors were the first who brought attention to this part of the world. It was one of these prospectors who recommended the creation of a settlement and a port near the city's current location. That was in 1926, and in 1929 the city was founded. While it does have a seaport and an airport, Magadan City remains to this day a very isolated urban center. Traveling here by car is not really an option. 2,000 unpaved and very rough kilometers separate Magadan from the nearest major city, Yakutsk. Nevertheless, you can find all the typical urban amenities we're used to, like shops, theaters, museums, cinemas, factories, and so on. Magadan definitely isn't a tourist destination, but if you do end up here, it'll probably be a unique experience. Alright, now it's time to talk about the very dark history of this place. With the discovery of gold and many other minerals, the Soviet government started to send personnel to Magadan. This is what led to the first major development of the oblast since its inclusion into Russia. These miners and geologists, however, needed lots of equipment, food and infrastructure. So in 1931, the State Trust for Industrial and Road Construction in the Upper Koluma region, Dalstroy in short, was created. Coupled with that was the creation of the Northeast Forced Labor Camp. What followed is probably one of the biggest crimes you've never heard of. Between 1932 and 1933, tens of thousands of prisoners were brought here to work. They received no winter clothing or any decent protected shelters, so when the incredibly harsh and six months long winter came, almost everyone died. This wasn't an issue for the authorities, however. They kept sending prisoners who were forced to build roads, river ports, airfields and settlements, including the current capital city. This went on for decades, 
especially during and after World War II, when thousands of prisoners of war ended up in Magadan. Now, to give you a sense of scale, it was only in 1951 that the maximum number of prisoners was reached. That number was 170,000. After this, the number of prisoners went down and they were replaced by civilian settlers. In total, between 1932 and 1957, at least 800,000 people were sent to Magadan's labor camps. 150,000 of them never made it out. While it may not seem like it, Magadan Oblast is one of Russia's most precious provinces. I mean that literally. This region is actually one of the world's richest mining areas. What can you find here? Silver, cobalt, tungsten, lead, zinc, copper, molybdenum, iron. These are just some examples. And they are of course some of the most sought after minerals on this planet. Not to mention that there's plenty of coal, oil and natural gas reserves. And at the top of the list is gold. Magadan has some of the largest known gold reserves in the world. But believe it or not, this doesn't mean that Magadan's economy is doing too well. In fact, it's quite the opposite. The severe climate and isolation of Magadan is greatly hindering the development of the oblast. The infrastructure is poor or outright non-existent in many places, and the collapse of the Soviet Union also brought about the collapse of many state companies, which in turn led to a massive exodus of the local population. When I said there was a massive exodus, I wasn't kidding. In 1991, there were nearly 400,000 people living and working in Magadan. That may not seem like a lot for a province this size, but keep in mind how rough life can get here. But by 2008, that number dropped to 165,000, which 10 years later again dropped to 144,000. In less than 30 years, two-thirds of the oblast population left this place for good. And it isn't over yet. Magadan is still Russia's fastest shrinking federal subject. Every year, the population still drops by about 2%. And soon, Magadan may not even have a rural population to speak of. Less than 8,000 villagers are left in the oblast out of 59,000 in 1991. These numbers are extreme, even when compared to war zones. I kept mentioning Magadan's harsh climate, but I didn't give you any details. Well, listen up. The warmest months of the year are between May and September. But when I say warm, don't imagine balmy summers with 30 plus degrees. No, no. These are the months that on average have no sub-zero temperatures. The mean summer temps hover at most around 15 degrees Celsius. For the rest of the year, get your coats out, cause it's frosty outside. The average winter temperatures are between minus 14 and minus 18 degrees, but some days it can get as cold as minus 25. And if you live in the capital, it can feel a lot more chilly than that. Since it's a coastal city, Magadan can experience some pretty impressive wind speeds from 7 to 40 meters per second. So the wind chill factor can easily make those minus 25 degrees feel more like a minus 40. Yikes! Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Leave your comments downstairs and don't forget there's a Patreon page where you can support this channel. I hope to see you next time. Bye.